Hello, and welcome to the Just Jim Radio Show. Grateful to have you here. I'm Just Jim, in case you're wondering. And the reason why this radio show is called Just Jim is because, well, it's just me. Not always. But I'm a pastor of Sarasota Center of Light. I'm Reverend Jim and started writing Just Jim on the board when I was teaching a class and it stuck. So today I'm Just Jim. Jeans and t-shirt kind of guy. Making a difference. And experiencing ourselves together. I've been helping people find their inspiration and make their way for quite some time. And it's something I am rather than something I do. So I'm grateful for you to be here. We, we, we do this by talking about varying topics, sometimes interviews, sometimes discussions. Today we're going to be opening some windows and letting some light in or opening some doors to make it easier to make your way. And talking about we are the world. Well, that sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it? Uh, you may be familiar with the, the song. Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson wrote, we are the world for wanting to raise money to stop hunger in Africa. And yet if you look at the words of the song, it's just amazing just how clear they are for our world today. <laughs> so what is it? What does we are the world mean? Well, the most obvious answer is each of us, all of us, who we are, how we are, is the world as we know it. We may each have our own interpretations of that in the way we see it, because no one can walk in anybody else's moccasins or footsteps or pathway. In fact, no one that has ever lived, lives now, or will ever live, will ever have the same thought. That gives you something to think about, doesn't it? And yet, the world as we know it is both an individual experience and a unified experience. The world as we know it, well, at least the world as we knew it, <laughs> it just isn't going to work for us anymore. Uh, very few have been able to step away from their lives and step back into their lives and have it be the same, that's for sure. Most of us are trying to figure out how it's going to end up being, all the changes that keep happening. And yet, it seems like there's less answers and more doubt than ever before. You know, we're questioning more and are less certain. I... I I hope for all, pray for all, share for all energy that everybody's comfortable and evolving through this time and into a new expression of yourself that makes a difference. We're all trying to find answers every day, whether we've got situations and circumstances going on in our lives like they have been the last few months or not. And even when we find our answers, it's hard to trust them. It's like whatever you believe in this moment or trust in this moment could be different tomorrow, could change. Who would have known we've been through what we've been through and have had what we've had happen and have it affect us and, and have us react, respond, experience ourselves different. And we are the world. You talk about making the world a different place or a better place. <laughs> it's the accumulation of all of us. So if you don't think that who you are, how you are, where you are, right here, right now, it doesn't make a difference. It does. Each of us are a note struck in the symphony of life, and the symphony of life doesn't exist without every note struck. And if you think, I won't say it that way, 
the truth of the matter is, is our love and light reflects far beyond even our own space that we're in or place that we're at. Every moment, every expression of every individual is what humanity and the world is. So where do we start to create something new that makes a difference? I suppose that depends who you ask. And you'd probably get a different answer from every one of them. And that's okay, too. Because each of us are unique and yet have a gift that we are, that we can contribute and share as us in our lives and with each other in humanity as we are the world. about the only place we can really start here is where we are right here right now just as we are in fact that's that's all there is is this moment you've heard that be in the moment mm. yeah this is the place we start and so it isn't about necessarily bringing what we've been into this moment It's being where we are. We only have now to begin to make a difference. The question is, what are we going to make of it? I believe that more than any other time, we need to look at who we are, how we are, in the way we're choosing to be in our lives. Call it your truth, call it your faith, call it your belief, call it your religion, call it your philosophy, call it your way of life. Call it the merry-go-round that makes you dizzy every day or the cave that you might live in or the mountaintop you stand on and see the world for what it is. It's going to be different for each of us. Or is it? Each of us are spirit, God, source, the universe, all it is, the divine, having a spiritual experience as a human being. There's this part of us that's walking around on the planet in our physical bodies, having emotional and mental experiences of ourselves. This is the vehicle through which our consciousness, our awareness, our spirit gets to express itself. And every one of us are going to have a different experience. I just said everybody who's ever been is or ever will be has never had the same thought. So we've got this little movie or this little play going on within each of us that's a little bit different. And then we bring it all to each other to make the world what it is. I think it's key in this moment that we find that truth, faith, belief, to find the inclusiveness in it, to trust it. Does it matter what we call it? It does to each of us. What within us, though, can be, in our beliefs, a catalyst for change? not to convert each other. Let's offer collaboration. Let's not try to convince. Let's offer compassion. Instead of criticizing, let's offer consideration. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. It's true we'll make a better day, just you and me. 
lines from We Are the World. And it's so very true. What better gift can we give each other than the absolute and complete, complete truth that is our soul given through the love of our heart without conditions or limits? Our own everything offered without any conditions through our love to one another. What kind of a world would it be if we did that? What kind of a difference would that make? I'm not trying to take us back to the 60s, or maybe I am. I don't remember much about the 60s. I was a little young. There was likely to be some drug-induced episodes back then, but anyway, without going back into the past. Love is unconditional and boundless, and I'm not talking about what we give or receive. I'm talking about who we choose to be. It's a vehicle or a portal or a an energy through which our deepest knowing can make its way into our lives. And when we're shining bright and, and brilliant and radiant within ourselves and we bring that to each other, the world we are shines brighter. It, it's more inspired. It's more uplifted. I know it's not easy. I know sometimes it gets challenging. I know so much has occurred that each of us have had to go through. But I ask you to, to take a minute to, to stop and think, to recognize that you are a facet of a huge reflection of a crystal that the world is. The light is universal. It's constantly reflecting no matter what we call it or how we look to it. And it's reflecting off of each one of us as an individualized expression of that. And that reflection that each of us are joined together is the world. And why not have it be a brighter, loving, caring, kind place? I'm not preaching. What do you want to experience? What do you want in your life? Well, bring it. <laughs> I'll say in a relationship situation where I'm talking to people about how they want their relationship to be or someone who doesn't have one, be what you want in a relationship. If you want more respect in a relationship that you are already in, bring it. Why? Well, because there's this law of attraction that when we bring this vibration of respect, it creates an opening that respect can show up. I'm not saying have it so much that you have to have it for your partner in order for there to be some respect. I'm talking about be what you say you want, whether you have it or not, and you will create more of it. It'll be a catalyst that allows for that to multiply by how it's experienced and how we share it. Back to we are the world. If everybody showed up a little bit more respectful tomorrow, the world would be a more respectable place. And don't think responsibility is an obligation. It's not. What are you responsible for? You could make a list of your life and the way things are in it and how you see it and what you're supposed to show up. Your commitments, your op that's not what I'm talking about. Responsibility is your ability to respond. Right now, you everybody needs to be responding rather than reacting. Reacting comes from how it used to be. Responding is showing up now as you are. And hopefully from a place that touches people at the deepest and profound level. When you strip away the interpretations that we have made of scripture or spiritual teachings 